Hallelujah. Well, welcome. This is Andrew Sharif, and uh, this is uh, How to Experience the Supernatural Part 2. And so you can uh, read this uh, teaching if you go to andrewsharif.org, go to Partner Letters, and look on the teaching um, for July 2012. Hallelujah. So, we are uh, in Part 1, we got to the point of seeing how God's kingdom works, and we're looking at how to receive God's power through faith, okay, as distinct from how to receive God's power through a gift of the Spirit. We saw that a gift of the Spirit is somewhat random, as we're not sure if we're going to receive it or not, whereas uh, if we receive God's power through faith, then this is uh, predictable, this is certain, because God has already promised it. So if we can get the faith, God's power has already been delivered, if we can get the faith, then we are certain to receive that power. Okay, so then we saw in Mark 4, 26, it says, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. We saw that we are God's garden or we are God's uh, ground. We're God's farm. And so we need to farm his, his word into our heart. And so that's, that's how we're going to receive the power is through planting the seed. That's what Jesus said. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should put seed in the ground. We have to put the seed in our heart. That's the labor that we need to do to ensure that we can receive the, um, the power. So, the farming of land requires significant work and time. Okay, no farmer expects instant results from planting seed. So, this is talking about receiving God's power now. It's going to take significant work and time to plant seed in your heart, and you shouldn't expect an instant result. Okay, every farmer knows they must first work to prepare the ground and also diligently care for the young seed as it is grow as it grows to maturity the farmer also knows he or she must wait patiently for the seed to grow and produce the fruit that's why hebrews 6:12 uh, says through faith and patience we inherit the promises we, it requires patience okay the the process requires patience we need to believe it but then it doesn't instantly necessarily manifest so there are two distinct phases with regard to the seed of God's kingdom. Okay? The first is the seed which causes us to become born again and members of God's kingdom. So sometimes people just don't look at, look at, they don't really look at the two aspects. One is when you get born again, but then once you get born again, then we can put seed in our heart for further fruit of God's kingdom. The second First is getting born again. The second is the seed which born again Christians are to plant and grow in their hearts to produce the manifold fruits of God's kingdom. See, a lot of people get born again and then they think that's it, but it's not. There's, once we're born again, there's there's massive amount of seed that we need to plant into our heart to cause us to experience the fruits of God's kingdom. We are, Let's look at how we we're born again. We are born again in an instant when we exercise faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and confession of Jesus Christ as Lord. The scriptures for that, if you look in Romans chapter 3 and verse 25, it says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Okay, So through faith in His blood, See, the propitiation means Jesus bore the wrath of God for our sins. So Jesus was set forth to be a propitiation, to bear the wrath of God for our sin. So we need to put our faith in that shed blood of Jesus, the, that blood that was poured out, that was put in the temple in heaven, to cleanse us from all of our sins. We need to put faith through faith in His blood. To declare His righteousness, God's righteousness. We receive God's righteousness through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins that are past. So the, our sin is remitted or our sin is sent away based on our faith in that blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, it says, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So we put faith in that blood 
that blood justifies us and instead of us receiving the judgment for our sin, that judgment was put on Christ. It's through His blood. We're saved from wrath. We're justified by His blood. So He took the punishment. He died on our behalf. That we are saved from judgment. Now we're saved from wrath. And then Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. There you go. Righteousness comes through heart faith. Through the, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So that's all God requires of us. He just requires us to believe in our heart. What are we believing? Well, we believe in the blood, but we also believe in the resurrection. The God has raised Jesus from the dead. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What are we confessing? That Jesus is our Lord. Confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus. So that's, that's how we get born again. So in the born again experience, our spirits are remade by God as new creatures, as the righteousness of God. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, what is the new creature? Is it our body? No. Is it our soul? No. Not, well, not all. Most of our soul, no. Is it our spirit? Yes. So our spirit is new. How is it brand new? Verse 21 tells us, For he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin, that's Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we're made a new creature. Well, how are we made? We might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So we are made, our spirit is made in Christ, the righteousness of God. So we, have a new, we are a new righteous spirit. That's what happens in the born-again experience. So the born-again experience is the culmination or fruit of seed, be, seed being planted in us, often by Christians who lovingly preach to us, even though we mightn't want them to preach to us, they do, and that helps us. So... As the Apostle Peter wrote, being born again, not in, in 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Okay, so we're born again. How are we born again? By the incorruptible seed of God's word. The eternal seed of God's word. Okay. So, once we are born again, fruitfulness in God's kingdom is achieved through additional seed being planted into our hearts. It's all about seed. Fruit in the kingdom of God is all about seed. And this is where a lot of people don't realize. A lot of Christians, I wasn't taught this really properly. I had to discover this, that it's all about seed. It's all about receiving the seed to get born again, and then further seed, cultivating and growing seed in our heart. It's God's word that brings the fruit, that brings the faith. Now, Jesus, in John 15, Jesus said, you know, unless you abide in the vine, you cannot... You know, bear fruit. So unless we, we abide in Jesus, He is the Word of God. Unless we get that Word in us, we're not going to bear the fruits of the kingdom. So the seed to cause our growth in the kingdom is done to some extent by par God's pastors and teachers we listen to. But also, so going to church and listening to teachers will help us somewhat. But also we can accelerate and supplement our growth by planting and watering seed in our own hearts through our personal reading and meditation of Scripture. In other words, don't just, don't just get your... You know, like I take vitamin supplements. I mean, you just don't, just don't eat... You need to supplement your diet. You need to take responsibility for what spiritual food you're getting. And going to church on Sunday for and listen to a half hour or an hour sermon is not enough. And you need to not just listen to teaching. You need to be meditating... Personal, personally meditating seeds that you want to grow in your heart. You know, you, you are God's farm. Your, your responsibility is to grow God's word in your heart. So we are each given by God the individual responsibility to ensure our hearts are cultivated with His seed. And we can see that in Romans 12.2. Romans 12.2 says... It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. So you've got to renew your mind through meditation of the Word of God. So we can also distinguish between work and faith. Okay? It is faith which justifies us before God and causes God's power to come into our lives. Okay? Romans 5.17, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Romans 5.1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6.12, through faith and patience we inherit the promises. So it's faith that causes the born again experience. It's faith that causes to get the blessings, right? The power. So we're distinguishing between faith and works. The work of meditation, starting to rain. The work of meditation does not justify us, nor does God reward our work of seed cultivation by releasing His power. However, there is a connection between our work of meditation and faith. The work of seed cultivation and meditation will produce faith. Okay, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing by the word. Therefore, we have an involvement in increasing our faith. One of the goals of our labor is the production of faith, which is, which is what will result in the receiving of God's power. In other words, we need to receive God's power, right? It's faith that brings God's power. But you've got to say, well, how do you get faith? You get faith through meditation. Meditation doesn't directly bring the power, but it's the method of bringing the faith. And faith directly brings the power. Can you see the difference? It's not works that... God doesn't reward us because of our works. God rewards us because of faith. But the works of meditation will bring faith if we're good at it. Okay. So, if we can become skilled or skillful at planning and growing God's promises or God's seeds in our hearts, we can over time produce a steady, predictable stream of God's power into our lives. The power is steady and predictable because it is simply a product of the seed which we've dil- diligently cultivated in our hearts. It's not dissimilar to the regular harvest farmer's experience due to the diligent cultivation of their land. So 1 Corinthians 3.9 says, You are God's husbandry. The, the, word, the Greek word um, translated husbandry means farm. Farm. You are God's farm. We are God's farm. If we're God's farm, we're meant to grow God's seed and produce God's fruit. The production of God's fruit is the predictable, steady stream of God's power into our lives. Think of it this way. If we plant the seed and we get the fruit, that fruit, that growth of that fruit, that is the actual power of God, isn't it? It's the power of God coming into our life. So it just comes from the seed. Right? The next logical question is, what aspect of God's power are we entitled to receive if we can successfully cultivate our farms or our hearts? The answer is whatever seed we can find in God's Word. There are hundreds of promises in God's Word covering every conceivable area of our lives, including our finances, our health, our strength, our safety, various aspects of our moral and godly character. Because we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ, we are entitled to receive every promise of God through faith. It says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says every, all the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him amen. So because we are in Christ, we are a new righteous creature in Christ, we qualify for every promise of God. And so all these seeds we have now, we can plant them in our heart and grow them and we're going to get the power of God coming into our life in all these different areas. So following is a logical plan for how we can gradually move into the supernatural experience of God's power. I would, however, just caution. Right? Some people get, go overboard on this thing. Do not stop doing what you're doing in the natural until you experience the flow of God's supernatural power. For example, if you're on prescribed medication from a doctor... Don't just throw away your medication until the doctor says that you're healed. Or, if you have a job, don't just quit your job until you can see a new supernatural source of income coming in. The exception to that is if you have a specific word from the Holy Spirit to just jump into the deep end, like I did. I just, I just went onto the mission field without knowing where my money was going to come from uh, because I had a word from God to do that. And so God was faithful and God knew what was in my heart and it worked out fine. So now I've got some steps here. I've got seven steps, eight steps, seven steps rather, which are steps to moving into the supernatural. One, select your seed. Okay, Find the seed or word promise from God which you want to supernatural experience in your life. Number two, 
right down the seed. Spiritual seeds are words or promises from God. If you need help finding the seeds, go to my book, The Sword of the Spirit, is a collection of God's best promises sorted, sorted into categories and tailored for easy meditation. Just go to my website, andrewshreve.org, go to the shopping cart and you'll see the book there, The Sword of the Spirit. That's, that has an overview of many, many promises. You can get that book. Okay. Number three, make a plan. Set aside time each day to meditate. Plant, care and grow your seed. If, if you were going to plant a, a vegetable garden, you've got to make time for that garden, don't you? Number four, count the cost. Calculate the cost of growing your seed in terms of daily time, pers- perseverance and opposition. The devil's going to challenge and fight you. You know, um, in Matthew, Mark 4, you know, Jesus talks about this planting of seed. And it says there in verse 15, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. So Satan comes immediately. It says, Affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake. So the devil is going to challenge you, you know, in all sorts of ways to try to stop you from receiving the seed. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 and verse 3 to 5, it talks about warfare. It says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought. So it's spiritual warfare to, to plant the seed in your heart. So understand that your heart also might be virgin ground, which had ne- has never been farmed before. Your, your soul is part of your heart. So it may be full of big rocks and trees and weeds and hard soil. It may require a lot of work to clear and break up the ground for it to be suitable to receive your seed. Jeremiah 23, verse 29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? You may have to hammer the word in your heart. You may have to light that fire in your heart to burn out that stuff in your heart that's resistant to receiving the word of God. Okay, number five, plant the seed. Mark 4, 26 says, So is the kingdom as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Number six, water and protect the seed. Continue unto har- until harvest. You know, Mark 4, 27, 29, you know, talks about that. Uh, shows the kingdom of God as a man should cast seed and should sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. First the blade, then the ear, then the fork corn in the ear. But when the harvest is ready, he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. So there's a time, time situation here to, to receive your harvest. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Verse 6 to 9, Paul also talks about uh, harvest and seed planting. 1 Corinthians 3, Paul says, I have planned Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labour. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's building. You are God's husbandry. So this is the work of the kingdom. And number seven, experience the supernatural. And that's we see in, in Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1.19. Paul prays. He says, I pray, uh, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. We want you to experience this great, mighty power of God. Okay. So it's awesome to have a heart which is cultivated with God's promises. In Psalm 112, and verses 7 to 8. Psalm 112, verse 7 to 8. It says, His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. He's not afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. See that what we are establishing our heart in God's promises. We're fixing our heart onto God's promises. Our heart becomes our most valuable resource. As it is written in Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. The boundary of our lives will flow from our heart. I hope this teaching has been helpful for you. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that you have made available supernatural miracle power to assist and bless our lives. 
Thank you for the revelation that your power can be tapped through cultivating your seed in our hearts. Thank you that if we can successfully grow your seed, we can predictably experience a steady stream of your power all the days of our life. Please open the eyes of our understanding to this great opportunity and strengthen us to diligently do the work of cultivation. Then we'll be able to experience your supernatural power every day for the rest of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Bless you, I love you, and I look forward to speaking uh, with you again next month. Bye.